The trip operon in E. coli contains the genes that are used in tryptophan anabolism, that is, building more tryptophan for the cell. If there's enough tryptophan in the cell already, then the cell is going to be repressing the trip operon. Repression of the trip operon has two parts, and the first part involves a protein called trip R, trip repressor. This is encoded upstream of the trip operon. When there's tryptophan present in the cell, then it's in the cell's best interest to repress, oops, to repress the production of more tryptophan. So in that case, the trip R will bind to the operator. Here's our active trip R bound to tryptophan. And that is going to repress RNA polymerase from being able to initiate transcription. So RNA polymerase is not going to be able to initiate transcription if trip R is bound to the operator. But there is also a second mechanism of repressing the trip operon and that mechanism is called attenuation. This was discovered because scientists found out that if you had a mutation where the trip repressor was a loss of function mutation, there was no trip repressor protein that was functioning in the cell, you would still see repression of the trip operon in the presence of tryptophan. So this suggested that there was a second mechanism of repression of, trip, um, of the trip operon that did not have to do with the trip repressor protein. This mechanism involves the leader and the attenuator sequences that we see right here. These sequences are located between the operator and the protein coding region of the trip operon. The leader and the attenuator will make RNA, but this RNA is non-coding RNA. So these actually produce an RNA transcript, but this RNA transcript is a non-coding RNA. So let's blow this up, the leader and the attenuator sequence, and we'll just focus on those for a while. If we look at the leader and the attenuator sequence, we see that it's actually made up of several different regions. So we have the attenuator itself at the very end, and that's going to be a string of U's in the RNA molecule. So the attenuator sequence codes for a string of uracils. This is going to have only weak hydrogen bonding during the synthesis of RNA. Upstream of this, we have four distinct regions. Regions one, two, three, and four in the leader sequence. And these four regions are going to be complementary to each other in the following way. Region 1 is complementary to region 2, so I'm going to draw that one in green. Region 3 is also complementary to region 2, and region 4 is complementary to region 3. So how this works is that green regions can pair with pink regions, but green regions do not pair with other green regions. So you can imagine what's going to happen as this RNA is being synthesized, this leader sequence RNA is being synthesized. The first piece that's synthesized is going to be region one. So now let's over here look at the RNA. And as region two is being synthesized, this complementary region two is going to be able to hydrogen bond with region one. And this is going to form a little loop. So region 1 and region 2 of the RNA molecule will hydrogen bond with each other and form a little loop like this. As region 3 is being made, It will not pair with region 2. Region 2 is already involved in pairing with region 1. 
But as region 4 is made, region 4 is complementary with region 3, and region 4 will bond with region 3. This is going to leave hanging off the end this attenuator region, this string of U's. I'm just going to call it the attenuator here. And you can see what this structure looks like right here. This structure right here looks like a terminator sequence, or a terminator region of RNA. And a terminator region is going to cause RNA polymerase to destabilize from the DNA-RNA complex, and the entire complex will fall apart, and transcription will end. So under standard circumstances in the cell, this is the structure that will be formed from this RNA. This RNA molecule that's made of the leader and the attenuator region will have these complementary regions, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, and they'll end with this attenuator, this string of uracils. This structure here, the stem loop formed by three and four binding to each other, followed by a string of uracils, is the terminator signal for the termination of RNA transcription. In this case, trip E, D, C, B, and A will never be transcribed, and they will not be made into protein. Under some conditions, it's advantageous to be able to make the trip E, D, C, B, and E proteins. For example, under low tryptophan conditions. When there's low tryptophan in the cell, it is going to be of the cell's best interest to be able to make the tryptophan anabolism genes and make more tryptophan. This regulation is accomplished by the presence of two different tryptophan codons in region one of the leader region. There are two codons that code for tryptophans here. This would not be sufficient to stop attenuation, except for the fact that in bacterial cells, there is coupling of transcription and translation. So what's going to happen is as this RNA is being made, you have region one of the RNA, region two of the RNA, as this is being made, it's also being read by the ribosome. So here are the ribosome, and the ribosome is reading one and two. The ribosome is moving along the RNA in this direction, and it's producing a protein when that's relevant. When it's promoting this, when it's making this leader sequence protein, what will happen is that when it reaches these tryptophan coding codons in the RNA, if there's tryptophan around in the cell, it will just read through it and this structure will be formed. However, if there's no tryptophan in the cell, the ribosome is going to stall in region one. As it stalls, Region 1 and 2 will not be able to pair with each other. This stem loop will not form. Instead, Region 2 is now going to have the opportunity to pair with Region 3 as Region 3 is formed. So when the ribosome is stalled, we end up keeping Region 1 held in the ribosome, and now region two, oops, wrong color, region two is free to hydrogen bond with region three. Now region three is not free to bond with region four, and so region 4 remains unbound. And there's a string of uracils, but the string of uracils is not directly after a stem loop structure, since 3 and 4 are not forming a stem loop. And transcription continues through the tryptophan genes.